Welcome to Gripecast with your host, Alex Hernandez. This show is dedicated to consumer technology news and pop culture. Gripecast is owned by TechAris. Visit TechAris.com for the latest tech reviews, news, entertainment, and pop culture. Now sit tight, the show is about to begin. All right, happy hump day and welcome to the least listened to podcast on the internet. You are listening to Gripecast with Alex. Hey, welcome back guys. It is Wednesday, May 1st and um, yeah, I'm back. This is episode 8 of Gripecast and I thank you all for listening. Anyone that's listening, I know we're the least listened to podcast on the internet and uh, I don't mind. Uh, not anymore. Uh, things are getting wild out there um, as far as search goes and and uh, just the internet in general. Um, AI, a- artificial intelligence is taking over. And uh, that's kind of going to be the main focus and topic of today's podcast is AI. AI in search, AI in everything, AI in your stove, AI in your watch, AI in, in about everything. And there are those on social media and on the internet who are excited, super ex- The AI bros are super excited for AI and where it's going and uh, how convenient it's going to make our lives and how we won't have to do a thing in the future. We can just be entertained for the rest of our lives um, by robots, AI, and um, yeah, just pretty much not be human. Well, I'm getting in deep already, aren't I? Um, at any rate, this, uh, the past couple of days have been busy for me. I, I've been busy for the past couple of months, uh, and it's not so, so much, um, oh, I mean, it, it's work related, uh, a lot of personal re- related stuff, but yeah, I've been, uh, super busy. Uh, and if you're following me on, on MeWe, uh, you'll know that, um, there's a possibility of me heading back into the workforce, uh, thanks to AI, thanks to Google, uh, thanks to, uh, the technology bros, the AI bros, all these guys that are um, absolutely crushing small publishers and niche sites. Um, and there's a clown right here on my screen right now. Uh, a lot of clowns in the AI bro business. Uh, Sam over here is one of them. And um, from OpenAI. As well as the uh, AI bros over at Google. So anyway... Um, <clears throat> we've talked in, I've talked in depth about Google search and how the algorithm is, uh, basically crushing, um, publishers, small publishers. Uh, and we are a small publisher, uh, a large publisher are outlets like Forbes, financial times, um, CNET, um, any of the corporate owned pub- publications and a lot of the, pub- a lot of the, a lot of your tech publications are owned by major corporations. So a lot of those uh, you'll continue to see and they will flourish uh, in this new AI driven world. And um, for a couple reasons, uh, the main reason being contracts. Um, and that is what companies like Google, OpenAI, Perplexity, um, a lot of these companies are going to be using, they're going to be using, and they're already training. They've already trained their AI models on content. Um, that is not theirs. Uh, our content is among them. Um, so what you're going to start seeing in, in search in Google search, especially right now is what, uh, Google refers to as uh, search generative experience. And that's based, uh, you know, it's using Gemini as their uh, main source of information. Uh, and what Gemini AI do- has done is it has gone through the entire internet and it has scraped the entire internet for information and it has parsed that information and it presents that information in a neat little package 
the top of search results, Google search results. And it basically um, summarizes the key points of a question that a user might have. Uh, this results in the user not needing or wanting to click through any of the results that the AI has pulled from. So there's no need for the user to go off page, go off of Google search. You are there now, and now you're going to look for something else. So you never leave Google search. So that allows Google to continue to monetize and put advertisements in front of you, um, just like we do, just like most publishers do, because that's really uh, one of the key ways that publishers can survive is through ad revenue. And it's funny because Google doesn't want you to use so many ads on your site and they penalize you for doing such things. But at the same time, they uh, do the same thing themselves. I mean, they're, they're the kings of um, and the overlords of, of advertising on, on the internet. So anyway, ran across this article from Gizmodo. I, I, I don't re read Gizmodo. I don't, I've never really liked Gizmodo. Um, but here we are. Um, we're kind of in the same, well, I won't say we're in the same boat because Gizmodo is much larger than we are. I'm sure they have money to be able to pay their way into this. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. But anyway, the headline on this article is publishers give OpenAI their content for top spot in chat GPT answers. OpenAI is telling publishers give up the content or get left behind. So we, I mean, here, OpenAI has already scraped many websites. So it's a kind of a really, um, the, the only thing, I think what they're doing here is they're, they're developing uh, contracts with major publishers so that the these publishers can get a cut of um, the ad revenue that comes in from however OpenAI uses that information. Um, but even if the publisher didn't sign a contract, OpenAI would still take the information. doesn't matter. So OpenAI is being generous I, want, I, I use that term loosely, and I don't even think it's the correct term. Um, basically telling these publishers, we'll pay you, uh, and, uh, you know, X amount of dollars to use the information, but even if you don't pay us, if you decide that it's not enough, or you don't want to cooperate, we're still going to take the information. So, at any rate, uh, so Gizmodo goes on to say here, uh, the Financial Times announced a deal with OpenAI on Monday to license its world-class journalism, world-class journalism, debatable. Most of these mainstream media outlets are, is, it's debatable whether or not it's world-class journalism. I just, it's a lot of marketing speak there. Um, I found that most of the, the major publications, I mean, they, they can toot their own horn and people um, accept it. It's, it's like, wow, they're just so great. Anyway. World, I, I digress. World-class journalism for training and information, uh, informing chat GPT's models. <clears throat> Excuse me. It joins Axel Springer and the Associated Press, who struck similar deals where OpenAI reportedly offers millions for the right to use content. So here we have Financial Times, we have Axel Springer and Associated Press all in the boat with OpenAI. So those publications that are being paid for uh, the right to scrape their data are going to be featured prominently on the first page results of any search engine of this, but whatever OpenAI is using here in, in the chat GPT answers. Um, however, chat GPT was trained on lots of other web scraped content that OpenAI did not pay for. And that's, I've made that point already. So why is OpenAI paying for some data sets and not others? OpenAI licensing deals seem to send a clear message. We're going to use your content anyway, so sign a deal with us or get left behind. The main perk of a licensing deal seems to be prominent spot, be a prominent spot in ChatGPT's answers. 
Some publishers may want to solidify a relationship with the big, next big information distribution channel before it takes over. However, it seems OpenAI is using a lot of publishers' content anyway. So there you go. There, there's you are either going to cooperate with the AI model and uh, pay for a spot in that model, or they're going to use your information anyway, and the most likely be used, the information will be used to populate uh, quick results, whereas you won't get a click. Uh, so users won't, uh, won't be encouraged to click your, your data. Uh, they'll just use it and populate their own answers with your data. So OpenAI already trains its AI models in part on, quote, publicly available data, according to CTO Mira Mirati, which seems purposely vague. What is publicly available data anyway? The phrase assumes anything free to read on the Internet is also free to build into ChatGPT. For instance, Gizmodo is part of OpenAI's publicly available data. Our website was cached over 34,000 times on GPT-2's web text data set, the last data set OpenAI disclosed using to train an AI model. Gizmodo is free for readers, largely due to the ads on the webpage. If readers can access our content through ChatGPT, that breaks our business model. The New York Times, which is used significantly more in GPT-2's web text, web text data set, sued OpenAI for copyright infringement over this matter. A content licensing deal with OpenAI seems like the only way for publishers to stay relevant in the AI era. In a press release, the Financial Times Group CEO John Ridding said this deal will broaden the reach of their work while offering early insights into how content is surfaced through AI. Quote, the thing about AI is not really artificial intelligence, said Matthew Butterick a lawyer representing Sarah Silverman, another book author suing OpenAI in an interview with Gizmodo. It's human intelligence, which has been harvested from one place, divorced from its creators, then this big tech company puts a price tag on it and sells it to someone else. Bam. I mean, that's what, that is what is literally happening right now. I mean, I don't even like Sarah Silverman, but man, uh, I, I'm going to agree with her, with her lawyer here 100%. It's, a human, it's human intelligence, which has been harvested from one place, divorced from its creators, then the big tech company puts a price tag on it and sells it to someone else. And that's exactly what's happening. Everything that I've written, we have uh, 16, 17,000 articles on Tech uh, and 8 or 9,000 of those are mine, uh, ones that I've written personally. And the other half are other other writers that, that have written for me over the years. Uh, and Jason is one of them. Uh, Jason Bowmeister, he, he he's written with me for years, and his content that he created, that's on on my site that we own, that that I own. He, I mean, they, they've scraped his, and then they're they're scraping it, and they're using it, and there's no repercussion, and there's no uh, accountability. I mean, th that's that's just what that's what the future is right now. That's what it is, and. Um, this morning ran across another story. I wrote it up, uh, and it's Google search may soon face new open AI competition. And I just opened up the article and I'll link to everything, but on the show notes, but, uh, you know, apparently open AI is now working on a new search engine. And this is going to bring competition to Google search. Um, obviously Google search is working vigorously on Gemini, Gemini AI and SGE, which is their search generative experience. Um, ridiculous names that they, 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 the marketing teams on these, on these, in these companies, they, you know, they're, they want to make it sound as palatable as pos possible without telling you exactly what they're doing. So we get into, into this article I wrote, I said, Google search, it's been a topic that's been on my tongue, mine, fingertips, and nightmares for the past few months. If you listen to any of my podcasts, you'll know why. Google search is very much broken, and Google's doing some very shady things to small publishers like myself. Uh, to, just a word of note, I did mark this article as an editorial, so it is uh, it is an editorial. Uh, Google search is broken because AI broke it. 
Gemini is crawling the internet as at a fever, at a feverish pace, scraping all the content it can without permission, I might add, and using it to bolster Google's core product search. Google wants to keep users on the search engine and away from it, us pesky little people who created the content in the first place. Now, rumor has it that OpenAI may be prepping to drop a search engine before the Google Developer Conference goes live. So I think the article stated about May 9th. Yeah, there's my quote right there from Anal Analytics India magazine. So May 9th uh, is the rumored date at 10 a.m. that OpenAI is going to announce a new AI search engine kind of uh, uh, like perplexity AI. Uh, perplexity is another one, and people have been using perplexity, and but but people don't understand perplex perplexity. Excuse me. Uh, people think perplexity AI search engine is something new and something great, and oh man, it's going to, uh, um, you know, we don't have to use Google anymore. We can use perplexity AI, and it, it gives such great results. But those results, again, are from content scraped from the web, stolen, uh, perplexity stealing content, just like OpenAI stealing content. And, you know, I know there's going to be comments and people saying, oh, you're just whining, you just whine, you just got to work harder, you got to work harder. But we've been, I've worked for 11 years on this site, almost 11 years, I worked hard to create uh, thousands of articles and reviews and a lot of helpful information and um and that's um that should not be allowed an ai search engine or an ai algorithm should not be allowed to just take that data and use it however it wants for its own uh gain so uh, they're making money on on this so they're making money from the content we've all created i'm not the only one so i'm, I'm i speak for every creator out there that's creating content uh, that the AI is using um, to make money on their own. Um, so, so I go on to say in the article, so AI search engines will be the new thing. It would appear that way to me. Google search is a thing of the past and Gemini search, open AI search and perplexity will be the future. At least that's what the overlords of the internet say. But what happens when AI kills enough publishers that there's no more new content to scrape? So what happens? What's the answer to that? When publishers start dying off, there's no more small review sites. There's no more small niche sites. There's no more um, publishers to give you information from a expert perspective. What happens? Well, the answer is back to Gizmodo, back to publishers, at least publishers like the Financial Times, Forbes, Axel Springer, Associated Press. Those publishers will get top spot. They will continue to create content because they're being paid by the AI uh, search engines. So they have incentive and they have uh capital and money to continue to operate whereas small publishers are going to die and we're going to continue to get buried um, and everything that is paid for is going to be rising to the top including reddit results which is another what well, that's paid for though we know that that um, Google already did a 60 million dollar 60 million dollar deal with reddit to scrape their content so um, now we're talking about, uh, you know, if you're familiar with Reddit, you, you know how deep that goes. And I'm not saying that there's people, there's not people on Reddit that don't know what they're talking about. Uh, but the way Reddit functions, the likelihood of you getting bad information through a Reddit result is very high. So, um, I wouldn't trust, uh, and, and right now I know there's been a lot of complaints about um, like medical advice and and really life altering advice being served on Google search um, from a Reddit result, and some people are are you know uh, who wants to who wants to trust a uh, 
a post from Reddit from some obscure uh, anonymous user uh, with a, you know, screen name of Tickle Me Elmo or whatever. Um, you don't know that person. Uh, that, there's there's no connection to that to those Reddit results. There's no human face to it. You know, same thing with reviews. You know, why are you going to trust uh, somebody that's behind a screen that isn't front facing? You don't know who who's the owner of that account. Um, but here you do. You see me. Uh, I you know I don't appear. On, I haven't appeared on camera very much because I'm I'm not a camera guy. But I'm here now. I'm on my eighth episode. I'm getting more comfortable talking, and hopefully you guys are are, are seeing that. And um. Uh, but I'm here, uh, and but I've always been here. People have always known that Alex Hernandez is the owner of Tech Eris. They know the reviews that I write. They know me. Um, you can't say that for for Reddit, for the majority of Reddit, you can't. Anyway, I go back in where um. Uh, in my article, uh, article here on Tech Airs, where will the AI get its information? Uh, yes, the big corporate publishers that are already benefiting from Google search algorithm updates. So basically, the future of search will be from sources that work closely with the search engines. The complexity of information and the different perspectives of, of information will be limited. You will only be allowed to see what the AI wants, what the AI wants you to see. It sounds to me more like an information prison. But what do I know? This very article won't even be listed in the search engines in any place of prominence. It will be shoved to the bottom, only to be shared by the few of you who have been supportive and loyal to us. And that's the meat of it. That's it. You won't... The, the, the future of search is AI search. In the future, at least that's what the AI bros want. And they're pushing for it. And they're pushing hard. And they're pushing us out. Google is pushing us out. I had a comment on, on MeWe here. I, I posted this over here. And uh, VB Wired. Um, sorry, VB, if I'm pronouncing your screen name incorrectly. But they commented, you can't pay me to use Google. It was destroyed by its leadership. Thank goodness there is a replacement that actually works. And I get you. I understand. Brave Search, DuckDuckGo, Start Page, and the list goes on. I even I have an article that lists a bunch of uh, Google search alternatives. But uh, let's see. I think I have it right here. Yep, 10 alternative search engines. I mean, you can go to Bing, you can go to DuckDuckGo, uh, Brave, Swiss Cows, Quant, Mojik, Startpage, Wolfram, Alpha. There's there's tons of them. But a lot of the uh, information that these other search engines parse their, inform their, their results from are from Google. And the other thing is... As Google and OpenAI and Microsoft, as AI starts to push and kill small publications, the only information that will be left is from large publishers with a corporate agenda. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is where you will get your information. You will no longer get a diverse pool of perspectives and ideas you won't get um, the smaller publications information because they're killing us and as they kill us people will write less there's going to be less content being published and more content being published by the large publishers like Forbes Financial Times NBC CBS I mean, you see some of these websites that are not tech websites. Forbes, I, I want to pick on Forbes. Let me pick on Forbes because, because Forbes is, is a very good example. They, they write a lot of articles that are not in their wheelhouse. You know, 
top 10 smartphones, top 10, you know, sawzalls, you know, they're, they're writing these and they rank for them, though they don't know what they're talking about. So the future of information is what they want or what they're going to give you. You will be fed the information that they want and you will not get organic real results you will not get organic um ideas it's all going to be it's the same corporate information on every search engine eventually brave eventually duck duck go eventually these search engines will start falling to the wayside dying unless they do their own ai and unless they pull from from you know google and and use those ai model ai models and it's they're they're going to die not because of their own ideas or the, or the way they're 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 doing things they're going to die because we're dying they're going to die because small publishers niche sites bloggers they're all getting pushed out of the algorithm and eventually that's going to happen on youtube and we talk about a parallel economy. We talk about using alternate platforms, Rumble, Odyssey, you know, all these other platforms. Uh, but these platforms are, um, you know, I like Rumble, but we don't get, um, there's not much of a placement for us on Rumble. Uh, right now, the, the voice out there is uh, political. Everybody's talking politics. Everything is political political so a lot of that a lot of what you see on rumble and the first page of rumble is all politics um so there's very very little talk uh podcasts like mine uh websites like mine don't get the um support uh on with the smaller parallel economy type uh outlets as a political perspective does that's what's selling right now um and it's actually it's it's kind of kind of gross and disgusting to be honest with you. A lot of these, a lot of these people that are uh, political influencers, I I don't think they actually believe what they say they they believe. They're they're just out there grifting and and making a buck on what what they think that you want to hear. So yeah, uh, this podcast is was just this was it. I right hear um, I wanted to just talk about straight one subject this time i think that going forward i'm i'm probably going to just do that if um you know depends on 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 what my uh employment status looks like in the next few weeks um just a heads up uh might not be a podcast in the next few weeks because i'm going on vacation probably mean probably be my last uh real long good vacation uh in a while um I, I want to continue doing at least one podcast a week. I wanted to, to go on to doing two podcasts a week, but given that I might start working again, uh, I won't be in my office here at home to do these type of things. So I appreciate you guys. I appreciate all the support you guys have always given me. Um, I'll link to everything that I talked about down in the show notes. Uh, really only a few links from Gizmodo. Uh, I have Financial Times press release here where it says financial times announces a strategic partnership with open ai you feel free to read through this um but yeah I, i'd be curious to to know what you guys think comment down in the uh comment section of whatever social media platform you're on after you after you share this podcast please share this podcast um share tech um Check us out. Check me out on Substack. Uh, that's where I'm hosting podcasts. I'm trying to do some more article. I'm trying to do some article writing there, but um, it's hard to write in two different places and do a podcast and do the video. So there's there's quite a bit going on and doing interviews and doing everything else that I'm that I'm doing. Um, but I appreciate you guys highly. Those that are listening. Um, 
let's make this uh make make this the most listened to least listened to the most least listened to podcast on the internet um at any rate i appreciate you guys have a great rest of the week if you guys have questions please don't you know don't hesitate to ask in the comment section somewhere on youtube on rumble um and on MeWe, on X, uh, most of my time spent on X and, and MeWe. So if you need to catch me somewhere, it's going to be one of those two platforms. I'm on X uh, and I'm on MeWe. So if you have questions, comment in those comment sections there and, and I'll, I'll do my best to answer questions. I am uh, going to have a, another busy rest of this week uh, before we leave for vacation. Um, it's my son's birthday uh, on Friday, so we'll be celebrating that. So I won't be doing another podcast, most likely. I, I maybe if I have time on Saturday, I might might uh, kick something out. But for now, uh, this week I'm I'm done. Episode eight is officially over, and um, I wish you guys all the blessings in the world. Take care of each other. Take care of your families. Be kind. Be good. And we will talk to you on the other side. <laughs>